Happy Memorial Day. It's your boy Trav Moody here with yet another review. Today we have the Four Horsemen Studios Figure Obscura Anubis and Bestet Gods of Ancient Egypt review. Oh yeah, it's all about the mysteries of ancient Egypt and those deities you're going to worship till kingdom come and the pantheons of Egyptian, the gods and goddesses and all that crazy stuff. Anubis, of course, is the jackal-headed god of the dead. is being in charge of tasking these souls in the world of the living known in the afterlife. It's the guardian of the scales. Anubis' other role was the patron god of embalmers. Read more about the Osiris legends on the back of the package. But even better might be Bestet. We go from dog to cat with the goddess Bestet. She's a fierce lioness warrior, also goddess of the sun. The mother of cats connects the sun to her felines. And she's also known as the fertility goddess, so don't get too close to her. It's all about the realms and pregnancy and childbirth and all that fun stuff. So before we take a deep dive into each god of ancient Egypt action figure from Four Horsemen, I do want to relay that both of these were available, maybe still available at storehorseman.com for $120 retail. You must buy both. I know a lot of folks out there are swapping, maybe going Habsies. They only want Bastet. Someone else might only want Anubis. That's really cool. And then you split it. You only pay 60 plus the tax and shipping, whatever. But they're both separate packages, but they do come in a set. A twin Egyptian billing, if you will. Now, while my reviews don't normally focus on the packaging too much, I'm a big fan of deluxe packaging, as you may have heard. Gotta love the Gold Emboss Four Horsemen logo there. You got there. This is regular print, while only the Monkey King has that print. So yeah, the gold embossed lettering is fantastic. And you also have the wraparound with the hieroglyphic looking panels and everything. It looks fantastic. It's absolutely gorgeous. Arguably the best art they've had yet. And of course, if you could see the shine, there's some gold embossed lettering on the front as well. Really cool. The interesting thing is you got Bastet on the front, but then you have Anubis on the side. So same thing here. It can get confusing. I thought there was an error. I actually looked. I thought I struck gold, but no. They do come like this. So you, you're, on the side panel, you're going to think this character's in here and this character's in here, but that's not the case. You got the hieroglyphics on the top, with a little bit of see-through action. You got the binder with a pharaoh on the side. I believe these match. They do, real cool. You get the gold embossed key. And then best of all, you got some literature on the back so you can learn about these real-life ancient characters that are made in action figure form. Real life meaning however you want to portray that. And then you've got the gorgeous magnetic wraparound binding. They both share the same exact art there. Be careful using these as dioramas. Case example, I got the ghost of Jacob Marley. You could see how messed up this is because I used this background because it's so amazing as a diorama and over time it warped. But it also could have been just damage. It wasn't in any kind of cellar or basement or anything. But this damage and it's and it, it was almost impossible to get it back on the binding. So you can see it's magnetic. It usually attracts sticks. But I had to bend it to get it back on. See, it's having some trouble. So be careful using these as dioramas. Maybe just save them as a binder because then you're going to end up getting a package like that. Just word to the wise. And since this is a review, I do have to point out that these did not arrive mitten box. I have a bump here. It's crazy because this material is so strong yet seems like it can get deformed really quickly. And then I have some kind of like tape smudge thing, which I took off the plastic with a knife. I didn't just rip it open, took it off really carefully. And I still have this indentation here. And then I also have this kind of like bump or something like that. So not good. I don't know what's up with this, man, but it's too bad because it's beautiful packaging. They package it really well, but it seems like it's got some wear, wear right here. I may have to contact the store horseman and see what they think. I hate doing that. I hate being that nitpicky, but these this is the kind of packaging I do want to keep MIB. And for our mint and box collectors, this is how they look before I tear them apart. Forget playing with toys. It's story time with Travis Moody, baby. We've got a booklet. Let's read, guys. The mysteries of ancient Egypt include the various deities they worshipped and their rich belief in the afterlife. Yeah, this shrine is freaking cool. It's so awesome. So here's the deal. 
I'm not taking this off. It's got four pegs on it. It's going to be tricky. And you'll and how I did it, okay, it kind of got off a little bit. Do one side, then do the other. You can warm it up, all that stuff. But how I pegged it in was, obviously, it'll go this way because the tail on the jackal will go down. It's kind of loose. It's weird. But yeah, just do this. See, it's already having a, I'm already having a hard time. I didn't want to have a hard time, but I'm reviewing it. So there you go. Look at the detail and everything. Yeah, where's the figure? You never do the accessories first. But when he comes with a shrine, you got to do the shrine first. Now, another cool thing is pop that off. You could put all the accessories inside. If you don't like, if you don't mind any jiggling or anything like that, you could fit some stuff in there. Why not, right? You got the space. So then if you don't want to put it, put it back in the package, and then obviously you get some NPCs to carry the shrine for our gods. But you know, or it's it's Monday and the gods need to work off all that alcohol and sweat it out. So you get like battle damage and everything, like just the paint detail, the specs and everything. It's absolutely tremendous. When it comes to detail, full horsemen, hard to compete. Hard to compete. All the crevices, all the detail. Again, the jackal looks absolutely terrific it looks you know sculptured painted it looks real and that's the best part of it now this this pops off the tail i guess which is good because it would snap off oh and there it is there it rode but while you look at the jack ah you'll pop that right back in boom smooth like butter Normally, I'd say ladies first, but I have a feeling most of you are going to be more into Bastet than Anubis. But that said, Anubis looks tremendous. It's a jackal face. And this is more of like an actual, you know, god monster character. Because we also have the sculptured statue look in different sets. So you got like claw hands that come with each character. And then you have human hands and human feet. But just looking at this figure right from the get, it is absolutely tremendous. People were going nuts during the pre-order. It's actually still available. I just looked, but just just the amount of detail, all the ceramic golds really pop on the face. I'll give you an extreme close-up right here. Look at that. Look at that detail. It's it's amazing. It's so stunning. You got all the crevices. It really looks like it could be a character that's been hanging around for a while, too. And Look, you got the vein detail, everything, the muscle, you could see the tendon. When it comes to paint and detail, is there anybody on the level of Four Horsemen? You got the scaled, almost chain-like male torso. And then you got the loincloth, which has extreme detail. And this is a very, very soft, I mean softer, the softest kind of PVC you could get. And you got underneath the flap but just all the ridges all the detail this is all one piece with the buckle there and you got all this nice ridging there and you get the loincloth look at the crazy detail in this cloth it looks like it was just knitted you know it's it's just mind-blowing lift that up and you got a peg hole on the bum you got a hole here in case he's got to go and you got all this you got like it looked like it was like unpainted or paint smudge or anything like that, but it's like dirt, you know? They're standing around in the desert in the sand all day, so you got that going on. But yeah, just just look at the the vein detail and the cabs, and you got the the darken just like a dog. But Anubis just looks so dope, so dope. I love the figure obscure line. It's the only line I collect from Four Horsemen because there's no chance in hell I'd have any room for any cosmic and mythic legions. And trust me, I've woken up early for both and failed on some pre-orders where I was like, eh, it wasn't meant to be. But figure obscura, where they release one figure a year, maybe two, something like that. So it's absolutely cool. So as you can see, some people might have discrepancies with the paint. You could see some smudging. I, I kind of dig it in a way that it's kind of like these are ancient gods. So you could see this some like blue paint spilling over there onto the gold. I actually don't mind it just because of what we're talking about, right? It's like battle worn. Yeah, is it a little sloppy? Sure, it happens, right? But overall, just just tremendous. You know, your mileage may vary with some of the paint stuff, and we'll take an even deeper dive into that. All right, enough of the close-ups. Wanted to give you the full range 
of scale and how it looks just all the way around. And again, one of my favorite things is you can even see from far away that this is not a flat cloth. You can even see the ridges from this distance and you can see how much detail this character has without even going too close. All right, getting into the fun stuff, we've got Anubis's Nemesis and it, it might pop off while you're articulating it, but now I got it in pretty good, but it tends to slowly work its way out as you articulate and just to kind of give you a quick articulation with it on since I got it on Anubis does look all the way down obviously cannot look up because the second you do this the head is going to want to start popping off kind of want to look in that way so it's a pretty it's got pretty decent range of motion considering that you got the chain mail necklace here you got the nemesis head wrap so you want to pop that off Obviously, you probably don't want to keep that off unless you cheat the angle so there's no way to see it. You want to keep it at a 45 degree angle because the second you go any more than that, you're going to see the peg on the back. But it does have excellent range of motion when you take the headdress off. So it can look all the way around 360, but I doubt you'll do any of that. Here's a more animated look at Anubis. He's not too thrilled. He hasn't had his breakfast yet. Um, but just kind of tilting that around, as you can see. He got the peg in the back. So we'll throw the Nemesis on. There we go. Boom. Doesn't really click, but, you know, you kind of mess around with that. And voila. Then you got your statue. As you can see, it's got the cracks in the stone there. Really awesome detail. Got some on the top all the way around and he gets many on the sides really excellent of course we'll throw our nemesis on and like i said you want to use two hands to push both together to keep it there okay so come to find out this actually comes with a new neck and you could pop it off this took me a good two or three minutes to really use my incredible moody hulk uh, power to try to get it off but yeah this is the more creature animal type neck but see how this is cracked pop on the new neck let's see how much trouble this will be all right so you're going to want to line that up right there and wow it's i said you could probably boil and boil pop heat whatever use all that but i'm going to free wing it and see how easy this easy or difficult my goodness I broke my freaking neck! But yeah, I'm trying to... Oh boy. Alright kids, I think I got it. <laughs> I think I got it in. I think I was fighting it for nothing really. But as you can see, the differences... They're not that remarkable. So if you even don't want to bother. But, you know, it's a great option to have. It's very cool to do. I mean, on the Headless Horseman, obviously you could take off the neck because he's headless. Or whatever, but on here... You, know, you got the ridging, like the neck, but it really isn't all that different. I mean, you see the cracks on the side. Now you can see how this could be more realistic as the cracks kind of line up all the way and, they, and they're better. But once you even put the necklace on, it really is hard to see. And there's your look at Anubis in full statue mode with the Nemesis and the cracked neck. Now, a lot of people knock the Mythic Legion's articulation, but it's all about mixing and matching and being customized. You can pop the arms right off, kind of like your AEW jazz wears figures you could just about send the arm all the way over and that's with the nemesis and the chainmail. so that are that amount of range for a single jointed fig is damn good then we're looking at the elbow and you gotta again this might arm might pop off so you gotta be a little bit careful there but if you had fairly good range again i don't think you're buying full horseman stuff for articulation and the fact that we're getting that you know you got your horizontal joint on the on the hands but then it has a 360 around and some good range there again so just to give you an example the amount of range you got uh, it's a decent pose and then this is even better it could put someone in a chokehold it could hold on to your head yeah you could do a lot for a statuesque type figure there's actually a lot of range so that we got a 360 torso and you got a little bit of a tilt there and a full rocker scalp chainmail underneath and then leg articulation 
You could do a full Jean-Claude, as my guy Punk with Toys would call it. And you're not going to get a whole lot on a single knee here, but but since it does tilt all the way around and it's got that hinge, you know, this is a lot of articulation for an ancient god of Egypt type figure. It's pretty good. I'm not going to go too crazy there. You know, of course, you, you're never going to do a Hulk Hogan boot, but you can if you want. You could look like Anthony Edwards last night. Dunking all over the Mavericks. You got vertical hinge on the foot. Full 360 on the ball. And his paws do have a rocker. So pretty good. Got a th thigh swivel there too. Lots of articulation for Anubis. All right, accessory time. You get a whole baggie of hands. The mix of claw creature jackal type hands and human hands. I'm guessing the statue would have the human hands for some reason. I don't know. You guys tell me. I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to ancient civilization, but my guess is if it's statue form, you're going to go with the human hands. If it's creature form, you go with the claws. But you got like some tight gripping hands here. You got your mystical mojo voodoo type hands that we always see. And then just the same exact hands, just one will have the fingernails painted and one won't. Watch out, God McFarlane. We've got another character coming in hot with the feet. And that's our boy, Anubis, as you can see the detail on the bottom. And let me guess, yeah, the Nemesis fell off. But you can pop the legs off. And you got these bracelets that will come off both the legs and the arms if you want to remove the hands and the bracelets. Not that you would. Again, why would you do that? But it's because if you customize it, you'll want to. But this upper bracelet on the tricep doesn't come off. It's sculpted in there. And... Voila, removable bracelets. Everyone likes to have everything, so you get everything here. And because Anubis is selling his feet pictures online, I figured I'd do a comparison before they're off the market. And yeah, geeks, that whole earlier was to get his tail in there, and it's probably not going to stay in too much because the feeling I have whenever I put these damn tails on any figure in any toy line. You got that going on there. But, uh, all right. It does articulate, though. It's got a nice seat. The second I articulated, it wants to pop out. That is going to be problematic. Oh, we thought this figure was so flawless. Until you, until you put the tail on. Yeah, the second you pull that tail down. So you're going to want to put your thumb there. See, it still wants to pop off. You want to put your thumb there and then articulate it. And then you can kind of... Do as you please, you know, depending on his mood, right? My mood is the tail down. When he sees Bastet, tail goes up. You know, you know the feeling, guys. Here we got Anubis with his accessories. We've got the Was Scepter Staff in his left hand. There isn't a whole lot of detail to it, but with so much detail... On Anubis itself, I'm completely cool with it just being this turquoise like green. And then, of course, he's got the Ankh cross in his right hand. A little bit of detail, a little bit of rustic, as you can see, but really fairly cool accessories. And then Anubis has this jackal-like vase, and the head actually pops off, and you can fit, you know, one of those hands in there, a couple of those hands. And it's got all kind of cool hieroglyphics in there, and that snaps back on. So really nice-looking pottery detail. And the Eye of Ra, you got it. It separates from this stand that pegs right in. Got to pop that off. And that could sit on the shrine if you wanted to or build yourself a little tomb. But yeah, really nice. Got some cracks in there and some detail. Some dark green, blackish paint going on there. Overall, how am I feeling about this guy? I'll let you know after Bastet. All right, and here we have Bastet, the first female in the figure obscura line just a beaut but before that like before we have an accessory that is above accessories this thing is absolutely wonderful cat statue of course look at that in scripture there of the that's like a eagle with like a cockroach holding a gem or look at the paint wash 
Oh, it looks tremendous. And this cat does not come off this platform, so don't even try. Look at the wood, the wood green in there. Taking a look at our fertility god here, we have the sculptured face inside the box instead of the lifelike face. So the default face is, is different, so that was interesting. And if you got that kind of the bug, you got the earrings that are really nice, and they articulate somewhat, you know, they're, they're earrings. But yeah, and then you get that same nemesis there. This time you have an eagle chainmail necklace. We'll take a look at that. She comes with four different head sculpts. Two that go with the nemesis that articulate inside and two that don't. So very interesting choice there. Same thing. So I won't run through the same thing. You get the removable wristbands. You got the default claws. So that's interesting too. So despite having the statue face... We've got default claws and default paws. Actually, yeah, it's a darker, feels like a darker blue or purple on the cat than the jack. And one thing I didn't mention earlier was that these loincloths, the soft goods, actually has a wire and they articulate so you can flap out like this way. They're not going to just fall on you. You can kind of pose them and bend them however you will. So she actually came with a tail in the package and it, and it does pop out, so... Sadly, I'm going to have to deal with that in this review. Shouldn't have shouldn't have took it off cuz now it's going to be looser. And we've got scales there. Really nice looking torso, mummy wraps and whatnot. And just to kind of go through the articulation really quickly. Same kind of deal except we got the female body. So, uses other I'm sure it uses a female body from Mythic Legions. I don't collect it, so I don't want to start guessing or looking it up or anything like that. You guys can let me know in the comments. Um, of course, the same thing. This band doesn't come down. And then these head sculpt tilts all the way out. It's a little easier to articulate her with the Nemesis than our dude Anubis. And there's a detail. Again, it's got that paint wash where it looks almost like pretty dirty, but very colorful at the same time. Taking a look at the belt. Looking at the paint. Fairly good. Fairly good. You got a separate piece, a separate loincloth piece than you have with her. Articulation. Does the Van Dam. You got your single knee action all the way up. Pretty much the same thing. You're going to have the rocker on the foot. Hinges up. Ankle swivel. Now this time, the thigh does not swivel. It stays, it's all one piece. With the buttock. Go around, get the tail, articulates. It doesn't pop out as much as the uh, Anubis, so that's a good sign. When it comes to the Nemesis, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to pop that off, of course. It comes with a separate head this time, so you don't have to cheat it or anything. We got a hinge ball joint. There is no neck, so there's no replacing the neck this time. So then you have the other sculpted statue-like face sculpt without the peg on the back. So this vertical hinge ball joint, you'll have to work it before you put the sculpt on in order to get the articulation. Now... Now the head tilts up, tilts all the way down. Got a rocker side to side. How does that work with the necklace? Take a look. Looks up, looks down, same thing. And finally we have the stet with the nemesis on and the creature face. Same deal. We'll look down but you'll have to hold that in otherwise it'll pop out and then it's just not going to go up with that just to save time we've got the same deal with the hands human hands magic hands holding hands and then we have our clawed hands at the bottom and then we got our bare feet look out todd an accessory time in addition to all the hands and heads we've got the basket of babies so throw in some cat babies some kittens and you'll be good in there. Cat babies. Who's ever said cat babies? No one. And then here's a good look at that Cistron with the pharaoh look on there and all the hooks. It's a it's an instrument that's iconic of her presence.
And sad news, this additional accessory, this artifact here snapped off when I took it out of the package. Sad thing is I was very delicate. I was like, this is going to break, this is going to break. And I was very careful. Try The plastic was like enclosed on both this piece and the wings. And it was like really hard to snap out. So either I just suck or this thing sucks. But wait, there's more. I hope you like pottery because we've got a monkey, a hawk, and a pharaoh in addition to the jackal. So you can collect all your pots. We've got a lion and an eagle basically represented on her person already ourselves, but these are beautiful in color. All right, it's Egyptian whiskey time. Is that even a thing? Hey, look, what do I think of these two figures? How do they match up? First, we go with Anubis. I love it. I think it's awesome. I think the articulation is very strong. The paint detail on all the different ceremonial pieces is amazing. The headdress does pop out a little bit. That can be annoying. I had some damage on the packaging. That could be frustrating. Not the end of the world. Pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic. I'm going to go four and a half out of five. Not quite perfect. Just a few minor miscues, but I was not bothered by some of the paint rubbing on all the other stuff. The shrine is just through the roof. Great. Almost on par with the clock. As far as Bastet, she comes with all kind of accessories, probably to make up for the fact she doesn't come with a shrine. The statue is really cool. Doesn't have the muscle detail that he has. So that would have been questioned. The legs are pretty bare bones, <laughs> if you will. Not a whole lot of detail on there. Pretty straightforward. More of a statue where this was more of a creature. Maybe that's why she came out of the package with the more statuesque face than the creature do like the option of having the heads that match the headdress and ones that don't while anubis doesn't have that option always gonna have the peg on the back he does look ridiculous without the headdress where she doesn't so that's a plus but overall she's pretty terrific does have a much nicer loincloth and comes with more accessories and heads i'll also give her four and a half out of five to complete the set at a nine out of ten four and a half out of five now let's do some comparisons here we have our gods of ancient egypt with the ghost of jacob marley and here's the mask of red death complete with incredible grandfather clock and our gods clashing spears with sun wukong the monkey king and we've got Anubis getting all upset at his gal pal, Bestet, because she's taking her sweet-ass time carrying the shrine. Yeah, I don't get it either. It's something they would never do. <laughs> got the headless horseman taking a nice midnight stroll in Egypt. <whistles> Finally, we have Indiana Jones caught between two gods of ancient Egypt. And it's Pal Moon Night. Please leave a like. If you like what you see, give us a subscription. We go live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Talking all kind of toys, reviews, and news. And maybe even some booze. But what are the clues? Do you like the figure Obscura? Are you a collector of the line? Will you be adding the gods of ancient Egypt to your full horseman roster? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'll catch you in the toy aisle. Trab Moody, I'm out.